just like that, the week has gone by pretty quick. We want to give people time right now to get ready to come on. Amen. We uh, we got a, there's some praise reports today. We got a sermon, and God is a good God. Yes. And we're gonna we're gonna enjoy God today. And going to church is not to be dreaded; is to enjoy God, to get close with God, to hear what God's saying. And even by me speaking today, God can speak to you yes. of what is going on in your life. Because what I'm going to talk about today is for you. Praise God. Yes, yes. Amen. What God has laid upon my heart. Uh, right now, while we're waiting for people to come on Facebook and Twitter and uh, join us on YouTube or all the different social medias that we have, which is unbelievable. Yes, it is. Um, we're going to go to prayer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today here at Soaring New Ministries, Father. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings, Father. Lord, that we could come back here again, Father. Lord, that it's your hand of protection, Father. Lord, that right hand of protection has protected us, Father, that we could come here today, Father. Lord, no small feet, Father, because without you, Father, it doesn't happen. And Lord, letting the world know that we know who you are and what you do. Lord, you are a mighty God. Lord, you are the only God. Lord, and we just thank you for this blessed day, Father. And yes, Father, it is a gift. Yes. Today is a gift for all mankind that, that seen the sun come up, Father. It's from you, Father. You are a good Father. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to have your way in the service today. Lord, I would ask you to move on people's hearts, Father. Lord, that they let the word inside of their heart, Father. Lord, that they could get something out of this sermon, Father. Lord, because it is for them, Father, today. Lord, we ask you all in this your precious name, Father. Lord, and we tell you, Father, we love you today. Lord, we love you and we just thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Father. Yes. All the things that we don't even say that you and recognize what you do today, Father. We thank you. Lord, how you keep our families. Lord, how you keep our our, our loved ones, Father, how you keep our significant others. Yes. Lord, how you keep the people that we are connected with, Father. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, it, we believe and know that it is you. Hallelujah, Father. Lord, and we thank you, obviously, Father, for this day. And Heavenly Father, we ask you all in your what? Precious name. And the church says what? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Even before I get started, I just noticed today, Coming down the road, uh, there's a few more churches open. So I think people are going back to church. And yes. Praise God. And So it's an exciting time in the world today. It's a world that's forever changing. Praise God. And before I even get started, we want to talk about some of the praise reports. Amen. Our, my Uncle Danny had surgery this uh, week, a few days ago. Um, and it was about seven hours, and he's doing really good. Yes, he is. Amen. We want to thank the church. Mm -hmm. We and you know, talking about the church. We're talking. We're thanking the church day for your prayers, mm -hmm. because prayers make a difference. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And also, we have another. These are big praise reports. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you think that you can lose a family member, mm -hmm. you know, just think about. When you've lost somebody close to you, mm -hmm. how much it hurts. Yes, it does hurt. But God blessed us. Amen. And, and, and had his hand upon the surgeon, Father. Also, another big praise report in my household is that uh, Stephanie's mom has um, found a home God. Uh, to go for, you know, for, for elderly people and that she could have uh, round the clock care. God moved. And that has really been on our heart. We've been praying here at our church yes. and in our household about this because we needed God to move. Mm -hmm. we, could, we couldn't do it. God did. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's why we give him praise Thank and honor. You, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God With saying all that, you know, Good morning, church. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, what, to Soaring Eagle Ministries. Yes. 
This is our weekly Sunday service, amen, right here in Echo Ridge in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. That's right. And it is beautiful outside. I know the rest of the country or the west, the east coast, you now it's going into winter. Uh -huh. Well, we're going into fall. <laughs> and we'll go into fall for the next several months. Right. But we thank God for it. And uh, we want to give him honor and praise. We want to welcome everybody today, our friends, our family, mm -hmm. people that we work with, our co-workers, people that are listening to this message that we don't even know. We welcome you today, amen, and all the listeners on social media. Yes. And like I said before, it is amazing what God has done mm -hmm. with just being able to broadcast throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Because here at Sammy, we had a vision a long time ago that we're international. We're not local. We're not local people. We're international people. Yes, we are. We're for all people. Mm -hmm. For the whole world. Just like Jesus. Jesus says, I go into the world. He says, I go into the United States. I go into Europe. He says, I go into all the world. And that's what we're doing today. We're broadcasting throughout the world. Amen. Praise God. And we hope you've had a blessed week. Amen. And like I said before, we want to thank you for your prayers. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the... That's the great thing about church That's right. and the family of God and his people praying for one another. Mm -hmm. How many times do you see that in the word of God that talks about praying for one another? Right. The apostles talked about it all the time. The father talked about it all the time. Praying for one another because it makes a difference and it changes. Mm -hmm. You hear her all these songs like it changes the atmosphere. I mean, these new words that they say that just broadcast, and you're like, that is so true. It changes the app. When I get down and pray, it changes me, and it changes the atmosphere around me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and you know what? Today, we gather in his name. Amen. We gather in the name of Jesus. And that's who we truly give praise to today for all that he has done. And I just told you just about a couple of things that God has moved just here in our church. But God is moving all over the world. Yes, he is, Pastor. And God, he is good. I hear sometimes that people think that God's bad. God is good. God's mercy is unbelievable. When you think about the love and the mercy of God. Yes. And how can you say that he's a bad God when all he did was love you? That's right. He loves you. Mm -hmm. I am who you say I am. You know why? Because he loves you. His first thing to you was that he loves you. To the world is I love you. I don't come to condemn you. I come to love you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because we are all going the same way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. You know, sometimes God moves. He got, God moves in His time frame. That's right. Even when we we need Him right now, we say, "Oh God, I need You right now." Mm -hmm. If you don't come right now, now there are times in your life when you need Him right now. That's right. Right now, because He is a right now God. But other times, let me just say that. Let me back up. Most of the time, we're waiting on God, mm -hmm. waiting for God to line it all up. And that's not easy to say. Waiting for God to line it all up. As I say, to set it all up. To set it all up. To give him the honor and the glory. You, you're going to watch God move. If you sit back and trust in him and wait on him, you're going to see him move. When other people around you can't see him moving, you're going to see him move. Just like we've seen him move this week. Things that we could not change, God changed them. God connected us to the right people to get Stephanie's mother in a home. And not only that, it's a Christian facility. Praise God. How about that one? God even goes further than we what we even think. Right. And we always talking about the future. God is all about the future. Because that's what he did. 
We talked about it. We prayed about it. But it was we had to look towards the future. That God would work it out. Mm -hmm. Just like he, he says in, in his word. I have plans for you. Yeah. Not only that. I know what your future is. Because mm -hmm. he's already planned out your future. God, Because God knows everything. Yeah. When people think about God. He's, they put him in a box. And this is God over here. No, God has no limits. That's right. God has no limit, no, no human limit, no limit whatsoever. He created you out of dust. He showed you what limits he had. He could have created you out of thin air if you wanted to. That's, right. That's God. But in God's master plan, he took the earth that we live on and he made us out of it where we would live. <clears throat> So you give God praise and honor uh -huh. for what he does when you think about who you are. And you know, sometimes you think that you're not who you think you are, but God says you are. Uh -huh. That's the whole message. That I am who you say I am. Okay. I'm not going to listen to every other thing around me. I'm going to listen to you. All right. Right. I am who you say I am. I might not be exactly where I want to be. But I'm not going to listen to those voices. Right. Those self-doubts in my mind. Uh -huh. That says that I can't do it. Uh -huh. God says you are who I say you are. And our scripture today is coming from Isaiah 43.1. And I almost. When I sent them the scripture yesterday. I just wanted to put I am on there. Just to throw everybody off. Because yes. everybody's been thinking. Oh, okay he's going to come from I am. I am who I say I you know, I am. Who are you, Father? I am that I am. Yes, I and that's am. not where I'm coming from today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about us, what God says we are. In Isaiah 43, and he says just this to one person, but it's for every single one of us. But, that, but now thou sayest the Lord that created thee. Now, right there, I created you. Don't even go any further than that. I created you. Mm -hmm. I I, God, created you. That's for you. He created you. Oh, Edward. Oh, Jacob. Oh, Linda. Oh, Stephanie. It's every single one of us. Uh -huh. I created you. And he, look what he says. And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. Every single one of us that accept me, he redeemed us. I have called thee by thy name. Now that right there, he calls you. Every single one of them, when you're doubting your mind who you are, what you're supposed to do, God says right now, I called you. Uh -huh. I, I created you and I called you by your name. Right. And I also told you, just to go a little bit further with the self-doubt, is that your mind. Your mind. Uh -huh. Your mind. You're not anybody else's. You're not the other side. You're on the winning side. You're you are mine. Uh -huh. So in your mind, you got to get it straight of who you are. Because the people I come in contact, they don't know who they are. They don't know what they're going to do. No, and I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about somebody that's not accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord said. I'm talking about the Christians, the us, the Christians. Because Simeon is here to train people. We're not here to have another service. We're here to equip the saints to take the gospel to the world. Because that's what the Father said. That is the mandate for the church. That's right. It's to save the world. Is to save the world. But we got to know who we are. If we're doubting who we are and our abilities, what good are we to anybody else? That's right. Amen? That's right. <clears throat> Today's scripture is for us. His people, God's people. God has called you and chosen you by name, what, for this time? And I hear that echoing through many sermons across the world because you know what it is true this is our time 
And if the Lord don't come back, our time will pass. Yes, that's right. Our time will pass for what we do for God will pass. That's right. And we're going to stand before him. Good word. And we're going to say, he's going to say, what to us? What is he going to say to us? You know, being says, I heard somebody say, oh, if I can just make it through the pearly gate. That's not what God wants for you. God wants that for every child mm -hmm. to be saved. But God wants you to what? To do what he's called you to do. Right. Because he says, you are what he says you are. Mm -hmm. I am what he says I am. And you got to get that deep down into. The church has to get that deep down into them that they can do what God has called them to do. That's good. God has called you and he has chosen you. Mm -hmm. People are wondering if I'm called. People are wondering if I'm called. Yes, that's true. God says you're called. Why would you think that you're not called to do the work of the Lord? Mm -hmm. God got right down to it with Jacob. Yeah. He laid it out right where there's no, he didn't have to think about what was God said. God said, point blank right to him, I called you. I called you. Yes. Don't let anybody else tell you that I haven't called you. That's what he's saying to the church today. I have called you. Quit having self-doubt of what you can and cannot do. All right. Say it right now. God, you call me. God, you call me. God, you call me by your name. <laughs> and what? You are mine. The church as a whole needs to believe that they are called. Like I said, I'm coming in contact with people saying that same thing. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be doing this for God? Right. Now, if God puts it inside you, guess what? You're supposed to be doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not just the people that are in the pulpit all over the world. I mean, it's not us. It's everyone. Yes. One person can't do it. He called all of us mm -hmm. to save the world. He called every single one of us to do work for him. So if you hear my voice right now, God has called you. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you to find out what your calling is. That's right. Thank you, Lord. See, there it is. Oh, yes, I'm called. I'm called. Hallelujah. I'm called. Okay, what you call for? I want to others. Yes, the gospel. But what is your calling? What has God put inside? What is God? God created you. You're unique. There's not another one like you. Amen. He's put stuff inside of you that he wants to bring out. That he knows you can do. That he gave you the talent to do it. Yes. That it's in you and he wants to bring it out of you. And he wants to use every single one of us. Yes, he does. That's the big lie of the devil, that he don't want to use everyone. He wants you to sit right there in that pole, right there in that seat over there, that one, that second one to the right on the third row, that's your seat, and that's, that's where he wants to put you. That's right. But that's, that's, that's not what God wants for you. That's right. Come on. That's not what God, He sent his church into the world. They didn't all stay in Jerusalem and have church every day uh -huh. and go nowhere and do nothing. Send them out. He sent them out mm -hmm. together. Together. I like that. He sent them out by twos mm -hmm. so they'd have a companion, somebody to talk to, right. somebody to encourage them. Do you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. God knows the makeup of the human being. Yeah. And he, he created man. Man looked around and said, well, where's, where, where's my partner? Where's my wife? Mm -hmm. So 
So God said, okay, I'm going to take it from you. Yes. That's God. Thank you, I made you from the dirt and I'm going to make her from you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Because God already knew that man needed companionship. Yeah. Amen. He did. When somebody says, I don't need nobody, well, that's, that's not true. Because that's not how he made man. That's right. It's true. Or woman. That's right. We need each other. Yes, we do. Just like the church needs each other. Mm -hmm. We talk about praying. We all sit here and we have our great service on Wednesday night and we're praying. And we're talking, we're praying about all kinds of things all over the world. Yes. And then we hear the report come in. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're together. Thank you, Lord. That's right. We're seeking God together to get an answer. That's right. That's why I heard years ago, stay connected. It's the same thing right now. The church has got to stay connected. That's right. No matter where you're at, you've got to stay connected with your people. And in your people that want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Man, you don't know how much prayer means. You don't. Sometimes we don't get it. That's right. How much it means. How much. When God talked about it in his word that he's got to send angels. He's got to send his angels to warfare against the enemy. Mm -hmm. He's got to send armies to get it through. People trying to block God. In God's plans. God said, I'll take, them, I'll take them all out to get the answer to you. Thank you, Lord. That's prayer. Thank you, Lord. But if nobody's praying, God, come help me. How's... God says, you got to pray to me. you got to ask me what you need. Mm -hmm. If you seek me and you ask me, you shall find me. Yes. That's what he said. We've been seeking, we've been asking, and guess what? We found him on these issues that were pressing in our life. That's the good God we serve. When you say he's a he's not a bad God, he's a great God. He's the only God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You know what? Another one of the biggest things I'm seeing is still looking back. And it must be going on forever, people looking backwards. Uh -huh. Looking from where you came from, not looking where you're going. All right. I'm like, that's not even natural. And let's just think about that. Don't guess. Well, no, it's not. Because I'm forever changing. Mm -hmm. My mind is accelerating forever. Right. I mean, when I was a child, I was a child. When I was a teenager, I was a teenager. When I was a young adult, I was a young adult. When I was an adult, I was a when I was a young adult, now I'm a semi-mature adult. I mean, I, we're always moving forward. Yes. Just in the natural. Mm -hmm. So why would you think not in the spiritual? Mm -hmm. Come on. And why would you let your natural handicaps, those things that happened in the past, handicap you for the future? Oh. That's one of the great, the great schemes of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And... and you should look in the word of God. Now look at the men and women of God and look at their faults. Look at them. When you think you're, look at all the people that God used that had a checkered past. Because we all got to come the same way. Every single one of us, we're all in sin. We all were in sin. But God wants you what? Looking forward. Amen. We see right here in the same chapter of what God is saying to his church. Do not look backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the way God gave it to me before I even go to that scripture. It's just like that sign on the road. And it's bold too. And it says, do not enter. How about the other sign you see? Where it says wrong way. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't go down that street. You can't go. You can't go forward. Down a street that's backwards. That's right. Wow. You have to go around. Mm -hmm. You go around where you've been before. And you keep on going. Not looking backwards. It says do not enter. 
for a reason. God don't want you dwelling on things that uh, are in the past. Uh, Isaiah 43, 8 and 19 says, or 18, I think, our famous scripture, remember ye not the former things. And you say, well, brother, pastor, why am I saying that? Because I'm listening what people say with their mouths to me. Neither consider those things of old. Because in the next verse, he tells you what you are. Because I do a new thing. A new thing in you. Right? Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and a river in the desert. And, and that you know that passage is unbelievable. But you see right there, don't even think about it. Don't talk about it. I've said this before. Don't entertain those thoughts. Move forward. That's what, be who God called you to be. I am who God says I am. That's right. I am who God says I am. I'm not my former things. I am who you say I am. I will not doubt in my abilities to do what you have called me to do. Right. I hear that. That's one of the number one things. The ability. I don't have the ability. And you keep on saying, I, I can't do it. That's I right. can't do it. I can't do it. I, can't do it. I, I, I want to do it. I really want to do it, but I can't do it. That is a lie. And, right. and it's inside of you because you, you're stopping your own self from going forward. Mm -hmm. That's true. Don't let self-doubt stop you from doing what God has called you to do. What he has for you. Just for you. That's why we say he's called you by name. But he has it for you. Mm -hmm. There's things that you can do that I never can do. Right. And not only that, God didn't call me to do. That's fine. That's good. That's God's plan. You're more than who you think you are. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm trying to get through to you. You're more. You're more. more. You're more. I will not listen to those voices mm -hmm. that say I am not who you say I am. And lift up your voice to God and tell him, I'm here to do your will. Yes, thank you, for what, my life? Mm -hmm. Your plans for me. I am who you say I am. Mm -hmm. Lord, let me hear what you are saying to me. That's an important one. That's good. That is a very important one. If you've got your prayer life, you're hearing from him. He's backing up what he's saying, what you're hearing, what other people are saying here. He's backing it up because he's talking to you. Yes, thank you, Father. That's the mature saying. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's going forward. Not stuck in Meville. Let me put out all self-doubt I have in myself. That I can't do what you called me to do. That's right. You gotta pay, you gotta pray for God's help in that area. If those are the words that are coming out of your mouth, you need help from God. That's right. Because you're speaking what's on the inside. Or you're letting you're hearing voices. You're listening to other people saying that you can't do it. Yes, yes, that's good. And you know what? One thing you need, you need to get around people mm -hmm. that know who they are in God. Yes, that's right. Because you're more than what you think. I love that. God knows you can do it. That's right. You know what? God knows. 
Now just think about this for a minute. Why? Why would God call you? Our scripture, he called you. Why would God call you? Yeah. Why would he even call you by name? If he didn't call you by name, I mean, obviously you're important to him. Right. And why would God tell you that he's hit, you're his? Now, that, that's just completely opposite of what you think in your brain mm -hmm. sometimes. Or what other people tell you or what the enemy tells you. That is not what the word says. Because yes. he says, I have called you. And, and then we turn around and God would say, you're going to fail. Right? And then turn around and see you fall. God's going to see you fall. He called you. He called you by name. He says that I'm with you. He says that I love you. I'm here for you. But he's going to watch you fall. Yes. Do you see that in the word? No. Then why are you thinking that in your mind? That's right. Why are you thinking that in your mind? God knows you can do it, and he's called you to do it. That's right. Isaiah 43, 3, it says again, But now thou saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that he formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And the next thing is, what are you going to do with that call? What are you going to do with all those talents? I see people around me with talent. And I'm like, I wish I had that talent. I wish I had that talent. That gift to, to, to do things that I physically I can't do. But that God, God-given talent. You hear people singing. You're like, holy, that's, that's unbelievable. I mean, we play a lot of Jesus culture and, and Kim and you look at her voice and you hear sing, but there's other people who have just as no anointing voice. That's right. But you gotta, you gotta say, I can do it. I can use what you put inside of me, mm -hmm. what you God gave me. He said, at least I gave you one. But they're all kind of natural talents that God gave us, mm -hmm. and He wants you to use those for Him. To bring him glory. We need to prepare to use our talents. Mm -hmm. Come on. Prepare to be used by God. That's right. You're not going to sit here with us. You're going to go to the world. That's right. That's, that's what we want for you. Yes, we come in... Joined together as a congregation, but God has a work for you. Yes, yes. I mean, we have teachers and preachers, and we have uh, ministers, we have Sunday school teachers, we have singers. I mean, there's so much talent. People that have the gift of playing instruments. I, I mean, a gift. Yes. A gift. Where we can't do it, or you can't. There's there's some things we can't do. That's not our gift. That's not our talent. That's right. And we don't go do a talent or a gift that we can't do. But God says, I give you talents and gifts that you can do. That's right. And I want you to use those for me. His glory. Mm -hmm. Preparing yourselves for the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what a Christian is doing. He's getting more knowledge. He's learning, right? That he can be the mature Christian. That he can be who all he can be in Christ. Because yes, right. yes. there is a training ground. But you can't stay in the training ground and use that as an excuse. Right. I'm over here training. Well, we're all always training. We're always learning. Mm -hmm. Right? Just in the natural, also in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to read your word. Get that word inside of you. Yes. Get that word. Get that roadmap. Get that word. Get that will. The will of what God wants for you. Now you might think you know what you want to do. 
But what does God want you to do? God does not want you staying where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us here, God doesn't want us staying right where we're at. That's right, spiritually, that's not. Mm -mm. Right, he doesn't. This is not this is not the last thing we do. This is not all we're gonna do. That's right. This God still tells us today in, in Simi and every every person at Simi to move forward. Yes, yes. You're not staying here today. We're here today, tomorrow we'll be somewhere else. I see, I'm moving forward. Just in the natural and also in the spiritual. Yes. He wants the church moving forward. He wants you moving forward in your daily walk with him. Sometimes I write the stuff down and they, I think they're so simple. Mm -hmm. So simple. I'm like, God, do you really want me to say this? I know this. I don't, why are you telling me this? I want to give great revelation. I, I know this. Well, I mean, you think of that sometimes. That's being truthful. But God says, this is what I want you to say. Because how does the church grow if you're not daily walking with him? That, that's the problem with the church. You got a thousand people inside your church and you're not moving forward. What are you doing? If you got 50 people in your church, you're not moving forward. What are you doing? He says, go to the world. It didn't, didn't say sit on that pew the rest of your life and say, I'm broke chance. Come on. I look at my cousins and my nephews and people that just made decisions in their life to move forward. Start broadcasting about moving forward. Start preaching the word, moving forward. Using the talents that God has given them and put inside of them. And not listening to man say you can't do it. Amen. God says I called you. Anybody who says that you're not called is a liar. Because God says I called you to do my work. Mm -hmm. And don't let any man stand in front of you and say that you're not called. That's right. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't call you to sit around and do nothing. That's, right. that was going. that's a lie of the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's on the church. That's on hit the church right now in the world today. I mean, we live in the most blessed nation in the world. We don't lack for nothing. I don't have one pair of shoes. I got 10. But people don't even have one. I mean, the blessings of God. Where we say we don't need God. We don't. We got it easy. God says, I'm going to judge you for what you have. Wow. I'm going to judge you. If you have everything, I'm going to judge you for that you have everything. Come on. I'm going to judge that you didn't use it. Come on. I blessed you and I blessed you and I blessed you. I gave you more than enough. And you sit there and hoard it. That's good. Now I'm talking to churches. Yes, people on. inside of churches. When God has blessed you. When you've talked to God behind closed doors and said, God, if you bless me, I will help you. I will use what you give me for the kingdom. Yes, Jesus. How many people have said that and sit there and know that you said that to God? Uh, All over the world, you said, uh, God, if you do this, I'll do this. Yes. Mm. And then you put stipulations on God why you can't do what you say. God says, I give it to you freely and I expect you to give you to give it to somebody else freely. That's right. One of the greatest gifts I have is giving stuff freely. I thank God that I can give stuff freely. Mm -hmm. Help other people. That's, right, Pastor. That's what he's called us. He's taught to save the lost and help each other. Mm -hmm. Help people that you don't need. That, that need you. Yes. Do you think you come in contact with people that need something? And you say, well, maybe God, God will send you somebody. Yes. God sent you. Yes. God sent you. God knows who we are. 
do we know who we are? Where we have the ability to change people's lives. Because we're called by him. Those people that God puts put around you, he's called you for them. And that's a big calling. He's called you to change your world. The people you come in contact with, that's who he's called you to. That's right. That's absolutely right. Whether I'm standing up here or out there, God still called me to the people around me. Yes. Not some great thing, but God's called you for, to your world. Mm -hmm. The world that you live in. The world that you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And don't think that you can't. Because the Bible says you can. Yes. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. It's and you got to get it down in your spirit. And I, don't, I love to come to church and tell the church I'm rooting for you. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's my heart. Because I know it's tough. Yes. I don't act like I don't know it's tough. Mm -hmm. Even though we're blessed, we, we all face things. We face a lot of things. That's right. But we got to get it off ourselves. Because God's going to take care of you. Because yes, he, he says, you're not going to fail. If you're doing his work, you're not going to fail. That's right. He's going to make sure of it. That's right. He's gonna, God told me a long time ago, if I have to send 10, I'll send 10. If I have to send 20, I'll send 20. I'll send enough to get it through. And if people won't hear me, I'll send another. Uh -huh. If people reject me and won't do what I called them to do, I'll send another. Mm -hmm. That's God. Because yes. God says you're not going to fail. That's right. That's, good. That's what I'm talking about the church. When God's put it in your ability yes. to make a difference and you don't, uh -huh. that's on you. That's on you. Good. And you know, we all go through it. Mm -hmm. I remember explicitly is like I'm, I know my name. Mm -hmm. I did not give a ride to somebody that I should have gave a ride to. And I said, I'll never, I will, I will stop what I'm doing. And all those things that I say is important. Somebody needed me. Right. And I had the ability to do it. Help us, Lord. That's doing God's will. It's not some grand thing on a stage where everybody can see what you're doing and maybe think you're doing a good job, but that's not it. God sees all those things that nobody sees, that you see, that you can change, that you can make a difference. And he knows that you can do it. God knows that you have the ability. Yes. God, I am who you say I am. I can do the work you have before me. God, you have put inside of me the ability to do what you call me to do. Yes. How about that one? You have put that ability inside of me. To do it. Bring it out. Like I said before, bring it out. God, help me to manifest. Now listen to this. God, help me to manifest those things inside of me. That I may fulfill my call. Because he wants to what? Bring it out. And some things take a while to come out. Because some of it's maturity too. God, I am who you say I am. He also says just on a few things to lift your spirit up. He says, 
you're greatly loved. When you say, I am who you say I am, he says, I love you. You are greatly loved by the Father. Ephesians 2 says, God, but God's mercy is great and he loved us very much. His love for us is unmatched by no other. That's right. No one can understand the love of the Father yes. for his people, yes. for his children. You, Nobody can understand it. Here's another, I am God's workmanship. Yes. When he said, I am who you say, He's, I am his workmanship. Okay. Right in the same scripture, in verse 10, God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us to do good works. Just what I was saying. To do those things that you can do. And it's no big thing to do it either. That's right. It doesn't cost us anything. We can do it. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to what? Do it. Yes. Which God, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing it. He called you for this time. God planned, like I said before, in advance that you would be here. He, know, he knows everything. He knows exactly where you would land in the future. Generation, that we're in your family. We talked about last week, me and my father, about our family. The generations and what they've done and where we I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my grandfathers and grandmothers. When you think you have everything and you think you don't need anybody, just think about where you come from. That's right. That's right. You won't you don't have everything that you have here in America without your parents and your grandparents and their parents. So don't be all high and mighty that you don't need nobody. You wouldn't be here without those people and the price that they paid. I look at the manual labor. Now, I worked on a tobacco farm when I was 14 years old. I didn't like that. I didn't like that one bit. I said, this is not for me. There's got to be something better for me to do than this. And I don't mean that to be making fun, but I'm just saying... That's, a, that's called the future. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. What I had to do 100 years ago, I don't have to do that anymore. Yes, thank you, Lord. God has put things in our brain that we've now created cars and planes and trains and computers. I mean, God is forever moving forward. Yes, he is. That's right. But I look of where I come from mm -hmm. and where I am now. And I am who God says I am. Mm -hmm. I love that. <clears throat> but God, you know, there are things to look back at. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we can look at the blessings of God. That's right. The generational blessings. And I look at things where things have happened where people should be here, but they're not here. All right. God knows all about that. Mm -hmm. God knows all about that. But God has made us for this time. That's right. And it's great that we are in this time. Yes, thank you. Lord. Because God says, not only that, He says, You're my ambassador. Wow. I'm just saying, we think so lightly of who we are. Mm -hmm. But that's not what God says. And we can't sit there and look at past failures. And let them stop us from moving forward. Because I look at his chosen handpicked men. His chosen handpicked men and women since the beginning of time had failures in their life. But God says, I'm going to use that to propel you forward. They didn't fall in the same trap. They moved forward. That's right. I called you an ambassador. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Yes, yes, that's right. 
Don't forget that we are part of this chosen generation. See, when the enemy and your self-doubt think that you're this big, you're part of the chosen generation right now to move, to move the gospel to the world. And don't let you think in yourself that what you're doing is not what God wants you to do. If God has put it in your heart to do it, just like somebody doing a podcast. I said, right on. You talking about God. How can you say that's not a call? That's awesome. You're talking about God. The Father. Yes, thank you, Lord. And God also says, my last scripture is that just think, he says, you're a royal priest. See how we got things backwards just in our natural thinking sometimes and then the enemy comes and helps us out a little bit. Yes, thank you. But you know what? You are right. Mm -hmm. But that's, but he's always there to condemn us. Amen. Yes, but it says in verse 9 of uh, 1 Peter. God love Peter. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um Another one of God. I mean, look at that. They said, we'll take Jesus from the to be the absolutely not. Absolutely not. With that temper he had, whack, it was gone. Ear off. But God said, look at the mirror. God just put it right back on. Yeah. And, and Peter. Look, look what Peter did for God. He denied Christ. But he preached the most important message. To the world. That's right. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. See what God see see what God did in Peter's life. That's what I'm saying. Look at God's doing in your life. You're moving forward. Amen. Praise God. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. That's what he says. You were chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God. I mean, I just told you what God has done just this week. Things we've been praying about. Amen? Right. Who called you out of darkness into this wondrous light? At one time, you were not a people. Mm -hmm. uh, amen? And this is where that love and that mercy comes in. But now you are God's people. In the past... You had never received mercy, but now you have received God's mercy. I am who you say I am. I'm not, as a Christian, I'm not a second-rate citizen. I have been called by God. I have been called for him to do a work for him. Amen. Praise God. Just remember this week, today, I am who you say I am. And that's what I have for the church today. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Church, we love you here at Semi. We're praying for you. And, you know, I know I didn't uh, tell you our times today, but it is always on mountain time. And uh, we have our meeting this week on Wednesday night. Amen. Yes, amen. Please join us. You'll be blessed. And also, I think most of me will be back here on Thursday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And we want the church, amen, to be blessed this week, yes. amen. We want you to think about who you are in God. Because you're more. There's a lot of people running around saying, I, I can't do it. And I'm not, I'm not who you say I am. But God says you are. I've called you. And I'm not going to give your call to somebody else. Because I know what you can do for the kingdom. Because he put it inside of you and he wants to what? Bring it out of you. Praise God. Amen. So let's close with prayer. Thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that we've heard this message, Father. Lord, I want to encourage the body. Father, that you're more than some of us think we are. 
Lord, we are who you say we are. You are, we are chosen, Father. Lord, we are called to do a work, Father. And Lord, you want us to do it, Father. Lord, you want us to reach our destiny in you. And Father, I pray for the strength for the church. Lord, I pray for, Lord, to meet their needs. Lord, uh, all the things that are going on in each one of our lives, Father, you know all about it. And God, we want you to have your way in our lives. Yes. yes. Father, I know there's things that we want to do, but Father, are they the plans of you? And Father, we want to seek you daily this week and read your word, Father. And Lord, we ask you to refresh the church, Father. Amen. Those people that are not feeling well in their bodies today, Father, we pray for them. Lord, the people that are not sure what to do, Father, Lord, we pray for them, Lord, that you, Lord, that you would just touch them, Father. Yes. Lord, touch the, the mental state of your body, Father. Lord, and people that need help, Father, let them cry out for help. Cry, Father God. Help us, Lord. Praise God, Father. Lord, we thank you today, Father, that you were here with us. Lord, we thank you for you just being you, Father. Yes, Jesus. And that you know us. You know us so well, Father. And you're concerned about us. Yes, Jesus. And Father, thank you, Father, we want to do your will. Lord, we ask you to go before us this week. Lord, the attacks of the enemy that he's setting up for us, Father, we come against him. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, he, he tries to railroad what you have for this week. Lord, we send our angels. Yes. Lord, we send our people. Lord, that we would do your will this week, Father. Lord, let us be sensitive of what your will is, Father. Lord, if we're in a situation this week and we're not sure why we were here, Lord, let us seek you. Yes, Jesus. Lord, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Lord, what am I here for? Thank you. Lord, let me see what you have for me. Thank you. Amen. Praise, praise God. Lord, we want maturity for your saints, Father. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. Lord, we ask you all in this, your precious name, Father. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Amen.